Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Welcome to my weekly live stream. So I'm really excited about today's live stream because understanding conventional versus FHA is so, so important. So some of these weekly live streams, we get a ton of people. I feel like a lot of agents want to know about leads, leads, leads. Uh, but this is actually a really, really important live stream to really understand FHA and Fannie Mae, so, or conventional. So I'm gonna share some flow charts. I like to make this as interactive as possible. So I would love to answer any questions that you have, if they're uh, pertaining to FHA or conventional, or just really anything that we've discussed over the last several months, happy to answer those. So I'm gonna share my screen and we are going to get started. If you are watching live inside of our group, welcome. I do see some people watching live. If you have questions, you can certainly post it in the comments as well. And I'm gonna do my best to go back and see if there's any comments. Sometimes I forget. So if I do, I will be sure to respond after the live stream. All righty. All right, so like I said, today's live stream is really teaching you the difference between FHA and conventional. Um, there's a pretty big difference. And so that is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. I also wanted to just remind everyone that we will not be having a weekly live stream next week. Uh, my kids are on spring break, so we are headed to the state of Florida to spend some time with family. So we will be off next week. Um, however, if you're brand new or maybe you want to go back to a previous training, I'm just going to show you quickly how you can do that inside of our group. So this is our group. And if you click guides at the top, this is where all of our past live streams are available. Now, this particular live stream, 
usually does not get posted until a few days later. So we will um, ask if you want the replay tomorrow, but it doesn't get posted here probably till next week. But here is a ton of live streams. So if you absolutely love coming on every single Thursday, I do too, but we are gonna be off next week. So you can go back here, watch all of these. There's a lot of information, um, short sale listing prep, um, how to represent a buyer, three pillars of thriving wildly and short sales. So it goes all the way back to August. So um, if you're looking for some training, certainly go to our guide section and find that for next week. We will be back two weeks from now. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about uh, what is the difference? So let's take a look at the conventional short sale flow chart. So for this particular pick case, um, I am going to use a Fannie Mae, okay? So we're gonna take a look at Fannie Mae versus uh, FHA, okay? So here's the Fannie Mae flow chart. So when you get a call from someone, you know, what is their plans? You know, what do they want to do? And so if they really want to keep the property, uh, I do feel like right now a lot of people are in denial. The banks have been bailing them out and postponing these auctions and the forbearance here and there. Well, something has to give. And so if you're watching this and you're interested in the niche of distressed sales, do something about it now. So when the market does shift, you will be ready to also shift your business. So Fannie Mae, if they want to keep their home, now inside of my coaching community, we don't handle loan mods. However, you can walk the seller through how that works. And so if a seller does want to keep their property, here's the steps to complete the loan mod. Um, you do want to let them know that there's a lot of companies out there that will say they can do these loan mods they take their money and they run. So just let them know um, that they can do the loan mod on their own, okay? It's a lot of follow-up and, you know, a lot on their end, but they can technically do that. If they go and start paying companies, they really, really have to do their due diligence. I don't know how many times I've gotten calls from sellers that they try to do the loan mod, someone ran off with their money, and now they're stuck and they're really their only option is to short sale or, or sell. Um, I am getting a lot more short sales now versus the, the equity sales that we've talked about in the past. So how would they do that? They're going to call their bank. They're going to ask for, um, they're going to ask for the loan mod packet. So FYI, the loan mod packet is typically the same as the short sale packet. There's just different questions that they would have to respond to. Once they complete all that and encourage them to carefully read through that, they will fill out that packet and they'll fax or email it. Now they have to follow up with the bank. Follow up is key here, okay? And so, you know, the bank's going to say, oh, I didn't get this or I didn't get that. And they have to continue to send that until the packet is complete. They're either going to get a, approved for the loan mod or they're going to get denied. If they are approved, then they'll start the trial plan payments, Okay. Here's the thing with that. I would still stay in touch with these people. Why? Well, they fell on hard times for whatever reason it may be. A lot of times they can't even complete the trial payments. So stay in touch with them. If the loan mod was denied, then they can um, proceed immediately with the short sale. Or sometimes they will try again because they are still in denial. Okay. Um, it is important to know that the bank is not going to forgive that amount though. Okay. So that gets really tricky when it comes to FHA. If they don't want to keep the property, then they can list the property with a short sale specialist expert, um, or someone who understands the, um, ins and outs of a distress situation. Once you receive an offer. So with Fannie Mae, um, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I absolutely love Fannie Mae short sales, okay? They have a very, very great system, but in order to deal with Fannie Mae, which is initiated through homepathforshortsales.com, you have to first submit the entire packet, whatever bank it is, um, submit the packet first, okay? Once you submit the packet and it's deemed complete and the bank or the servicer or the lender, remember I use those all kind of the same, 
they will tell you to initiate the short sale through uh, home path, okay? Then the appraisal is done. A lot of times a BPO is done as well. And then you're going to initiate, I'm sorry, you're going to negotiate directly with Fannie Mae. That is why I love Fannie Mae's system. It is a fairly quick process and you're going directly to the investor. It's not you and the servicer and then the investor, okay? So there's like really no middle person. Yeah, you have to submit all of that stuff to the bank up front, but it is a pretty quick process. Fannie Mae is the one that's gonna send you counters. Fannie Mae is gonna be the one that proves it. Once it's approved, they'll send you an email and then you'll go back to the servicer and the servicer is the one that will issue the actual approval letter and then you can proceed with closing. So pretty cut, pretty simple, I would say, when it comes to conventional. Um, any questions on the conventional process? Because I do want to spend a little bit more time on FHA, given that it is a very complicated uh, process. Any questions on conventional short sales or what I just covered? Okay, good question, Carrie. The turnaround time. So let's just say I have a Fannie Mae deal right now. I wish I did. I don't. Um, but uh, there's there's actually a, a one of our members inside the community just had a Fannie Mae short sale. Actually, Carrie, it was in Chicagoland. And um, we, we went through and did all of her stuff live in the group. So it was really, really cool. But once you get an offer, so by the, the, so it's a crazy market, right? So you're probably going to get an offer right away, but you know, back in the day, it could take two months to get an offer. So I'm not counting that time frame, Carrie. So once you get an offer on a Fannie Mae short sale, the, from the time you get the offer until you actually close, or I'm sorry, get the approval letter, let's just say probably four to six weeks, maybe a little bit less. I've done it in three weeks before. Um, sometimes if the property needs work, you may have to do a value dispute. So it takes a little bit longer. Um, but let's just say around 30 days. And then of course you're going to go to closing. So the approval letter will be issued. It's usually good for, I would say around 45 days. Okay. Any other questions? You're welcome. All right, let's move on to complicated. Anyone listening, um, either in Zoom or live in the group, done an FHA short sale before? Not on the buy side, but the actual list side. I'm gonna take that as no, and that is okay. So let's take a look at, so we're gonna move on to the FHA flow chart. So FHA. I don't love FHA short sales, but I am here to help anyone through this process, okay? Um, my heart is really like just wanting to help everyone. So Trish, yes, back in 2008, 2009. So I would say not much has changed. Um, it can be a very lengthy process, three to six months, give or take, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but let's talk about FHA. So there is a lot going on in this flow chart. So I'm just going to highlight um, because obviously we don't have all day to talk about FHA. If someone has an FHA short sale, so I actually just spoke to someone this morning that has an FHA short sale and we know for sure it's going to be a short sale. He has no equity. He has an auction date coming up. He called off of one of our letters and um, he did end up filing for bankruptcy. So he really would like to keep his house. However, there's really not much change in his financial situation. So he is probably not going to be able to keep that house. However, in an FHA situation, whether the property is owner occupied or if it is vacant, it does not matter. Every single FHA short sale has to go through the waterfall process. What is the waterfall process? That is um, basically a loan modification. So every FHA has to go through a loan modification. So if you get a deal, um, some of the questions that you need to ask are, you know, have you done a loan mod before? Okay. If they have said no, 
then you will have to go through the loan modification process. If they said yes, then you're probably not gonna have to go through it again. However, if they were then making trial payments, there is going to be a partial claim on the title of the property, okay? And that gets paid first, regardless of a short sale or um, if they're able to sell with equity, okay? FHA is so complicated. If you come across an FHA short sale, make sure you are surrounded by someone who knows how to help you through this, um, mainly for the homeowner, okay? You do not want to get them in a pickle. Um, so let's talk about the loan mod. So they are required to go through the loan mod, yes. If they get accepted into the loan modification, they can either accept that and make the trial payments. I would say most, most of the time when they have listed the house, they have made the decision to not keep it. And so if they are accepted, then they can sign an opt out letter, which basically will opt them out of all retention options except the short sale, okay? So that's where the process is very lengthy. I don't know why that is, but the loan mod process is so long. Once it either gets denied or they sign an opt-out letter, then you can proceed immediately with a short sale. So they will take it out of the loan mod and put it into short sale. That does take a little bit of time as well, but once it's in the short sale system, it actually moves fairly quick, quickly, okay? So they start the short sale. Um, an appraisal will be ordered. And so that's also where FHA is very complicated, okay? So an appraisal was, will be ordered. Once the appraisal comes back, then um, FHA is going to have to net 88% of the appraised value. So if you're in an area where the property taxes are low, it's probably going to be very easy for you to get to that 88%. But here in the state of Illinois, where our taxes are insane, it is difficult to get to that 88%. So every single FHA short sale has been completely different for me. It's not gonna be the same for you either. And so that's where you you know, just need help navigating through that. And so sometimes we have to raise the price. Sometimes we can go to FHA and ask for a HUD variance. A HUD variance just will allow us to have a lower net. It isn't always approved. So day one through 30, if you get an offer, okay, it's going to be 88%. That's the required net to HUD, okay? If it's after day 30, so 31 to day 60, you get an offer, then it's going to be um, 86%. And then after 60 days, it's going to be 84. So it does gradually go down um, because they do want to sell it. But here's the other thing with FHA. There's actually two parts of the approval process. So once that appraisal comes back, then the bank, the servicer, whoever it is, will issue an ATP, okay? In that ATP, it will give the appraised value and it will give you the required net. Um, ATP stands for approval to participate. That is like the first part of the approval process in an FHA short sale. Now, Maybe you have a HUD already prepared and the net is 88%. FHA is also very strict when it comes to um, fees and stuff. So they may still go in and cut stuff, all right? Just so you know. And sometimes the wording also needs to be tweaked um, on the statement as well. Once you provide them with a statement meeting that net requirement and you go through and the fees are all okay, then the bank will issue the actual approval letter, okay? So a lot of agents mistake the ATP for the approval letter. No, that is not right, okay? The ATP just basically says, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Seller have been accepted into the short sale program, but you have to get an offer before this date. It's usually about four months um, and it needs to meet this net requirement, okay? Once you submit the contract with the offer and the statement reflecting all of those numbers, then they will go and they, issue, they will issue the approval letter. So once the process um, in FHA goes to short sale, it is pretty quick, 
um, let's just say within a month. I've done it before in like uh, a week. But um, again, you have to be the one following up with the bank. Follow up is, is so key. And then after you get the approval letter, that's where you would then proceed with closing. So I would say, like I said, it's around 45 days or so. So as you can see, FHA is very, very complicated. I probably just confused a lot of you guys. But what questions do you have uh, regarding FHA, whether it's about the approval process, the loan mod, um, anything? I'm just going to check the live feed as well. So you can assume an FHA um, an FHA mortgage. So I've actually, so here's my take on that, Carrie, and I'm not actually 100%, but I do not know how someone could assume an FHA short sale. Because remember, um, the sellers are behind on their mortgage, okay? So they probably owe more on the property than what it's worth when it's a short sale, 100%. So why is a buyer going to come in, even though the interest rate is low and pay a ridiculous amount for the house? So just to give you a quick example, um, I got a call. This this was not the one that I just told you about. A call from a letter and they haven't made a payment. It's been going on in the state of Illinois. It goes through the court system. It is very slow. They haven't made a payment in years. Okay. And they probably owe more. Um, about 200000 more than what the property is actually worth because of all the fees and all that. So I believe a buyer would have to come in and assume the whole thing. Yeah, the interest rate is probably low for them, but I don't think that would be a very good um, business decision for a buyer. So I, I, don't, I don't think doing an assumable FHA is going to be possible. Maybe if they're like, they do have equity, that could be. So Carrie, if you come across that, I would love to help navigate through that situation. Are you an agent preparing the HUD or the attorney? So um, some states, so a lot of people in our group are attorney states. Um, some people in our group are title company states. So we have templates inside of our coaching community for the entire short sale process. And one of those templates is having the title company or the attorney prepare the statement. I do not prepare that on my end, mostly because I don't know the fees for the title company. I don't calculate the tax uh, prorations, none of that. So our template, Denise, um, gets prepared by my transaction coordinator and she sends it out to our attorney. The attorney pulls title and then we review the title. They prepare the statement and then we review the statement to make sure it's all good before we submit it. If you are a title company state, it's done the same way, except instead of sending the template to the attorney, it's going to be sent to the title company. So very, very good questions. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to touch briefly. Um, so we just wrapped up unlock our Unlock Your County. And so uh, we have a lot of counties that are actually closed. Some of them are, a lot of them are still available, okay? And so I would love to schedule a time to meet with you one-on-one -on -one, um, to see if your counties are available. Um, we have a lot of great stuff coming up in our coaching community. So on Mondays right now, we are going through all of the modules that I have created. So the whole idea behind this community is to eventually provide referrals for all of us, but really near what I have done here to be successful. And so we talked uh, a little bit about the leads that I'm getting. They are coming from our letters. And so on Mondays, I'm just going to go to the group real quick. On Mondays, we have our module series training. So basically, that means we are going through gradually, slowly, all of the modules that I've created inside of our Kajabi system. That special series training has been going on since mid-January, and it will continue until we get through all 18 modules. On Tuesdays, we just completed this week all of our marketing and advertising um, series training. So what was that? Everything we're using. 
So all the stuff that I put out in the community, I have tested, I have had success, I have closed deals. So I want to ensure that you guys have the success that I do. Um, because we just finished that series, starting the week of March 25th, we are then going to start a new series on Tuesday, and that is going to be automation and delegation. How can you really take your business and figure out what you can automate, what you can delegate in order to thrive more, especially with the market shift coming? On Wednesdays, it is all about building the attorney relationships. We now have two books inside of the community, The Ultimate Guide to Selling Your Home is a Short Sale and Ideas to Avoid Foreclosure. So how do you take those books and step-by-step -step build relationships with specific attorneys um, so it sets you up for long-term success. That is my number one lead source. My number two has been the letters. And then on Thursdays, we're getting ready to get on another training is our Back to basic series training. So today is all about pricing a short sale and uh, learning more about the BPO and appraisal. So that series is almost coming to an end as well. But I just wanted to show you how wonderful our community is. So Mickey um, is very pumped. She's been very consistent. So if you think you can come on and just send a letter here or there, not going to happen. But she is getting several calls from her letters. And she reached out to someone who got her emails and her letters from our campaigns. And, and she's able to list both of their houses and they have equity. So if you're looking to spread your wings a little bit and figure out what your next step is when it comes to uh, the shift in the market, now is the time. So I'm going to post a link where you guys can schedule a time to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, inside of that, we do ask for counties. And so um, we obviously want to meet with people that uh, the counties are available. So if your county is not available, uh, we will put you on a wait list. All righty. There is the link to um, meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. Now I am gone next week. So next week is blocked out. I did open up a couple of times uh, over the weekend. Otherwise you can schedule after my return. All right, are there any other questions? Okay. So I'll hang out just for a couple of minutes in case um, any questions arise. But otherwise, we will be, um, Trisha, let me check just a second. We will be back in two weeks. So remember, we're not in session next week. Two weeks from now, um, we will be back. So I think I do only two weeks out because if you schedule and you either are late, uh, meaning five past, five minutes past or don't show up, I do not reschedule. So time to me, and I talk about a lot of that inside of my community is very, very precious. And um, I just, it's a no. So if you don't show up or you're late, it's a no for me. Um, I go two weeks out, so I could go three weeks. Trisha, let me just edit that real quick. Um, and then you should be able to schedule. Oops. We'll do 21 days out. How's that? And you do get reminders through Calendly. So just make sure you put it on your calendar. Um, I'm a super organized person. I communicate. Um, if you love communication, you absolutely will love everything uh, that we're doing. So that should work now. Trisha, any other questions? So if you're just joining us, usually our weekly live stream is 30, 40 minutes of a really great training. We record everything. So the replay is typically available uh, the next day. It doesn't go into our guide section, though, until a few days later. Um, so you can be on the lookout for the replay post tomorrow. Otherwise, I did post, um, I have visitors this weekend, and then following week is my kids. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I know a lot of people are on spring break that last week. Uh, I don't know why we have spring break early this week. So yeah, I did do three weeks out. So feel free to um, check out the times and stuff for that. Otherwise, feel free to message me or email me. My email I'll put in the chat as well if you don't have it. 
Otherwise, I look forward to speaking to everyone and I will see everyone in two weeks, two weeks from today. And again, I'll just hang out for a few minutes in case there's any additional questions. Otherwise, thanks and have a blessed afternoon. Hey, Heather. I'm trying to find you your calendar on Facebook, but I'm on my app. How do I how are how do I find oh, that? Oh, you mean my calendar? Yes. Okay, so I just posted the link. Well, you're on your phone. Let me um Perfect. send you, I'll send it to you through Messenger. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, you are very welcome. If anyone else needs it and can't see it in the chat, just let me know. Yep, I just got it. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome, Carrie. And I can watch the videos at any time. Like I can watch a couple a day to get caught up. Yeah, so um, I'm encouraging everyone to um, go under the guide section and just watch all of it. There, Everything is recorded. It's all right there. It is labeled accordingly. So as you scroll through, Carrie, you can figure out, oh, I really want to watch um, this one about the book or this one about um, the letters or whatever it may be. So, yep, it's all labeled there. And they're all in order of what, like the way we should do them? Well, I, I kind of just pick and choose, um, you know, depending, I, I, depending on what we're doing in the coaching community. So that's, that's super step-by-step, step. um, you know, so we have our, our live trainings, um, uh, Monday through Thursday. So that's super step-by-step step. here inside of this group with the weekly live stream. Um, I really just pick my live streams kind of based off of, uh, questions I've gotten. <laughs> so for example, one of the videos is how to best represent buyers in a short sale situation. Um, inside of our coaching community, we don't really deal with buyers. It's more like, how do you take on a ton of distress sale listings, but someone was asking about that. So I said, yeah, let me do a training on that. So it really just depends on what's going on. Um, I will base the live stream off of that. And so the, the regular, the other group, you can watch this as well. Yeah. So the, um, so this, the thrive in real estate as a short sale expert is my free group. And so I do come on every single Thursday and I have this weekly live stream. I do that mainly because I want people to get to know who I am, get to know who Blueprint Short Sales is, and really see if uh, the niche of distressed sales would be a fit for them. Um, so you, if you're in the coaching community, then you absolutely can still attend these events. But I always say it's not necessary because there's so much support and training inside of that. And you really have to focus on um, the consistency and the organization inside of that group. But this is, you still have access to this, but you, you'll see once we chat, it's, I would, if you're in the coaching community, I, I will take you off of the emails for this one because we really want you to focus on getting your business up and running, like mirroring what I have done. Great. Thank you. And have a great vacation. Oh, thank you. I will talk to you soon. Great, thanks. Uh, Denise, the flow charts, the flow charts are available. Um, we have them not here in this group, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Um, but we do have them in JPEG and all that inside of the community um, because it is something that we stress to homeowners and we like to spread as much knowledge as possible throughout the United States. Um, because if you are in California and you're posting and someone sees it in Florida, well, then our whole mission is to connect with a blueprint person in Florida. Eventually, everyone in the United States will know, okay, I need the support. I need the hand-helding from, I don't know if that's a word, from someone inside of blueprint. So some of the stuff I share here, some of it is just strictly for the um, community. Really great questions. Thank you so much for being so interactive today. Um, any other questions I can answer? All right. I hope everyone has a great day um, and I will see you in two weeks.